It's been a rough five years for private equity in India and no one knows that better than Amit Chandra probably. Today he's our special guest on appointment. Uh, Amit, thanks very much for speaking with us. Uh, Thank you. Would you say we are in 2014 at a turning point for the private equity industry given the five awful years that we've had in the past uh, that a new investment cycle is maybe beginning to kick off? Yes, I think so, Minka. Uh, I think private equity, if you look back today uh, in India, is really a tale of two cities. Uh, Pre-2007, it had a great run, mm. and I think uh, people expected a lot more out of it, uh, you know, than potentially uh, uh, existed from a, uh, from a potential perspective. And I think po post-2008 has been, as you point out, a fairly difficult period for the industry, and I think things looked particularly bleak in the last uh, three or four years. But I think it wasn't as good as it seemed pre-2007, and it certainly wasn't as bad as it uh, felt like uh, post-2008. You know, I'm surprised you say it hasn't been as bad as we thought it uh, seemed like on the face of it, because I was reading a report out by Bain Consulting, uh, and they said that, you know, the impression with limited partners is that it's tougher to raise India-specific funds. Now, I know Bain doesn't necessarily operate that way, but it's gotten very, very tough to raise India-specific funds, and that if viable exits do not happen in the next couple of years, you could expect to see a shakeout within the private in equity industry as tenures of funds come to expire. It does look as if exits have not been an opportunity available over the last few years and money that was invested 8, 10, 11, 12 years ago is struggling to get out. You're absolutely right. I think uh, exits have been probably one of the weakest spots of the industry uh, as has been the entire impact of FX mm. uh, on portfolio valuations. I think those two have been very two big, very macro challenges that the industry has faced. But I think uh, to some extent, the shakeout that you're talking about has already played itself out. Uh, if you look at uh, India-specific fundraising in the last couple of years, it's really come down to a trickle. There have been very few India-specific funds which have, which have got raised. But I think that's a little bit of an issue which has got to do with model than just simply country. Okay. Uh, I think in general, people realize that uh, private equity functions in a volatile macroeconomic uh, environment. And actually being hostage to a particular country, lands up being very limiting. Hmm. Uh, you're forced to invest even when you do not want to invest. And you, know, you cannot go overly aggressive when you want to. And I think therefore the industry more broadly is reallocating itself towards uh, regional funds and global funds. Uh, so that's a little bit of an industry uh, phenomena. Uh, but I think your point is absolutely right. Uh, LPs do feel that India-specific funds is a... Uh, challenge and I think that is manifested in, in how many India specific funds have been raised in the last couple of years. So we are seeing the equity markets pick up. In yes. fact, we've had some record levels in the last six, eight, ten months uh, thanks to the Modi wave, so to speak. Uh, do you think that's going to pave the way for more exits? Because, uh, you know, some of the data I was looking at, for instance, last year we saw exits to the tune of $6.8 billion. That was a flat number versus 2012. And the impression is that a bulk of them are buybacks. So it's actually the promoter of the company buying back that equity, which defeats almost virtually the core purpose of bringing private equity into a company, really. So I'm just curious, do you see the number of exits rising exponentially over the next two years? Are we at a place in the equity markets where confidence has come back? No, I don't see it rising exponentially, but I see it rising materially. Okay. Uh, I think uh, the revival of the equity markets does provide an opportunity for a lot of deals which, you know, essentially, let's go back, step back and look at the last three years. There, we've had years in which there have been virtually no IPO activity. Hmm. Uh, secondary market activity also really came down to a trickle. Yeah. Uh, and therefore, uh, uh, if you look at the average position, it has got stretched well beyond what people anticipated. I think the recovery in the macro and therefore the uh, recovery in the stock market will provide an opportunity for a lot of that backlog to get cleared. But I think it's important to recognize that there is a chunk of that backlog that may never get cleared because fundamentally uh, investments got made in some cases in companies which you know, are never going to come to the IPO market in the next five or six or seven years. Yeah. Uh, those stories are just not played out. That's particularly true in the small uh, and medium-sized enterprise segment. And part of the reason uh, LPs are, uh, are upset with India is because in their own portfolios, when they look at the value of Indian investments, uh, those lot, lots of cases, there have been impairment over the last three, four, five years. So it's not just an issue of liquidity. It's also an issue of carrying 
of carrying cost and that carrying cost has got impaired because of everything that's happened in India in the last five years. Okay, but some of the data seems contrary to what we're discussing. For instance, uh, about 150 funds from 2012 uh, engaged in deals last year. 160 funds that did not make any investments in 2012 engaged in deals last year. So there are some funds that have started coming back to the market last year and now probably prompted by what's gone on in the elections, you know, in the last quarter or so. So on the one hand, you have all these dire, you know, sort of... Uh, forecasts which say LPs have run out of time and patience and then on the other hand you have this resurgence of private equity and then you have Amit Chandra saying we have way too many private equity players in India to begin with. Yeah. Uh, what is 2015 going to bring? Yeah, I think uh, more important than 2015 is what 2016, 17, 18 are going to bring. Okay. Uh, I think in terms of real deal activity, uh, private equity essentially bets on investment, the investment cycle hmm. and the investment cycle got broken in the last two, three years. Uh, for private equity to really go up in India, uh, you need to see the investment cycle resume. Sure. We are just seeing early signs of resumption of the investment cycle. My suspicion is it will gather more steam in the next 12, uh, 12 months or so. And once people have confidence, they'll come back with new projects. And that's when you will see the next wave of opportunities so becoming available. Two so years. I think actually 2016, 17, if the momentum persists, is when you'll begin to see activity which was comparable to what we have seen in the past. Okay. Uh, I think 2014 will uh, be a better year than 2013, but marginally so. And I think 2015 will probably get a little bit better because remember, private equity essentially invests in two kinds of opportunities, fresh capacity creation or buying an existing asset from its old owners. Uh, if you look at what's happening right now, broadly about 50% of the deals are essentially where an owner who's been there very long and cannot, uh, you know, wants to exit is essentially selling the asset. Another private equity person is stepping in in their place. Yeah, sure. That activity logically has to follow what has happened in prior years with investment activity. So that can't run away and become extraordinarily large. The investment cycle has to resume for the rest of it to really pick up. And I think that's a maybe we'll start seeing signs of that in 2015. But I think the real benefit of this will come in 16 and 17 when industries begin to get capacity constraint and need to ra raise fresh capital. I want your view on the stock markets, not only because you were uh, you know, a keen follower of the stock markets till about seven, eight years ago, but also because uh, the buoyancy in the stock market is essential to any kind of private equity exit and therefore reinvesting of funds, right? Uh, where do you think we are in the Indian equity markets at this time? Yeah. Overvalued, undervalued, yeah, you or know, at good value. It's it's fascinating because uh, the the extent of fundamental based knowledge, uh, even amongst relatively educated people, about how stock markets uh, work, I find is uh, is is shocking at times. Shockingly uh, low. Well, yeah, it is. Uh, you know, people carry biases which you know are just extraordinary, and you just got to ask ten people you know. Uh, about how their portfolio, uh, uh, you know, financial asset portfolio uh, is comprised to get really a sense of how people work. And uh, it amazes me because you go back and you look at India over the last uh, 25 years and you look at any five-year rolling cycle, uh, the best thing you could do uh, in an economy with all the volatility that India has had is put your money into safe uh, instruments in the stock market. My safe instruments, I mean, I'm a big fan of, of mutual funds. That's okay. how I invest as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but that has outperformed everything else. And yet, I think people like to invest in gold and they like to buy real oh, estate. That's what you mean. And, okay. and I think actually, uh, uh, this is important because participation in the stock market by Indians is actually running at historic lows. When I, I came back to this country in early 90s, um, and you know, at that point of time, people used to talk about how equity participation uh, as an asset class by, by Indians in Indian companies was low, but actually could double or triple. That number has actually gone exactly the other way around. Yeah. It's you know, less than a third of what it used to be in the 90s. So while this great India growth story is panning itself out, we as Indians, uh, directly or indirectly via insurance, pension funds, etc., have actually not, not participated in this growth. Are we overvalued, uh, undervalued? Have actually, we moved yeah, up too fast? It's very interesting. Again, the second point that I would make to you is everyone, every headline is screaming that we are at all-time highs. Uh, 
should all time highs be linked to a particular index number on a or on a valuation number i mean just logically when you step back it's got to be valuation right this is a market where historically you've seen uh when it gets overheated uh oh. trades at 24 25 but the 10 15 year average for india forward earnings generally is about 15 16. i'm going to draw a conclusion from both your comments and, and my point a, we're is we're under invested as indians and b we haven't reached peak, peak valuations we, we have no so you expect that there's much but more to go but when Manita it comes I'll to make equity a third values. point as well which is india is probably close to its long term trading average on multiple and that should in normal circumstances uh, address the issue whether the markets are overheated or not but i think there's another broader point which is where are we on the cycle we are coming off a 3 4 year terrible, terrible period for corporate india the earning cycle has been badly decimated uh, companies have had what you call profitless growth by and large, right? Because inflation was high, there was margin pressure. Gro so growth was anemic, inflation was high, margin pressure was high. Uh, therefore, ROEs got into trouble uh, with balance sheets getting more, more heavy. And so if you step back and think about if you believe we're going to have a good cycle, then logically what should happen is you should have better top line growth. You should see margin recovery. You should see as the unclogging of corporate India happens on various projects, you should see better balance sheet utilization. And all of that to me means better earnings growth than what you've had in the past and better ROE. And therefore, that is very, very typical of a recovery, recovery cyclical cycle, recovery. Yeah, yeah. And therefore, you know, if we were sitting on the peak of uh, a macroeconomic cycle and you would have told me that markets are trading at long term averages, I would have said, yeah, people, you know, we've got to be careful. But we are sitting at the cusp of an economic recovery and markets are trading at long term average. Uh, that to me is the data that should draw, drive the discussion on is India hitting all time highs or not. I want to now talk about bail. If you think that the uh, recovery or the, the signs of the cycle picking up are going to manifest itself in the private equity industry in terms of investments in 2016-17, uh, are we going to see the pace of investments at Bain pick up? Because in the last seven years, Amit, you've done only five investments. Yes. And that by all measures is a very, very slow pace. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Why I think, is that? I are you that over cautious? Criticism, well, I, I, uh, are we over cautious? Maybe we are over cautious. I think... Uh, but the macroeconomic environment uh, worried us. Uh, I think that is another issue that impacts us and probably impacts a couple of our peers as well, uh, particularly the large uh, investors, which is we focus on a segment of the market, Menka, where we are looking at large deals. Hmm. And uh, if you really go back and look at it, there haven't been many large deals. Hmm. Uh, for us, it's been particularly severe because we do not invest in real estate or infrastructure. Right. And there were some of the larger opportunities were in real estate and infrastructure in the last three, four years. So in hindsight, uh, now you should well, probably we were very be lucky. grateful we, we bit, we that bit globally that Bain does not invest in <laughs> yes, these sectors. Uh, that, right? hel that helped us enormously. But the only reason you don't invest is because globally Bain does not. We right? do There's not. no we other not, reason no, specific we, to we India. We, that yeah, you know, we do yeah. not understand uh, regulated industries and how to, how to factor in that. Mm. And also there's another point, which is... Uh, a lot of these investments are essentially target a, a return profile which is very different from what the charter of Bain's funds are. And so Bain doesn't basically do that. But that has, in retrospect, helped uh, Bain enormously. Uh, but I would say, uh, would we be more bullish on India at this point of time? Do I feel more confident that uh, we will make more investments uh, here? I, I think so. I want to go through some of your investments, not to get your specific comments on those investments, but just to talk yeah. about how difficult it's been, right? So you invested in Himadri at that time. I think the market capitalization was about 350 million. Uh, currently, it's around 130 million, so it's half. Let me just put it that way. Hero's done well for you. You've done a partial exit. That stock's done well, but that stock is, you know, a stock that's on the top five list of every mutual fund portfolio investor in this country. So you don't get too many brownie points for doing well with Hero. Genpact, you bought it about $15 a share. The price has moved up to roughly 17 or 18. So you're making a bit of a profit there. Uh, MQ is unlisted, so I don't really know what's gone on with the valuations. And the fifth investment that you did, Lilliput, has really gone sour for you for entirely different reasons. Uh, you've not, you've, you've been very slow, and yet, you know, you might have avoided some spaces, but 
it, this is not necessarily the best private equity portfolio you could have no, built, it's not. right? It's not. I think, uh, you know, Minka, I think uh, we would have loved to make more investments. In retrospect, we were glad we, are glad we did not. Uh, we were skeptical about uh, both the macro environment and also the quality of deals that were coming through because India did go through a, a, a spot where I think uh, you know uh, quality of deals began to suffer, and lots of private equity players have burnt their hands with uh, more companies than they should have. Hmm. Uh, all of this obviously uh, has coloured our thinking. Um, I don't think it has permanently damaged our thinking, hmm. um, but I do think for us to be more prolific, we do need to see more macro stability, which I think is is coming back. But I think uh, we look at look at the portfolio and. Uh, you know, I think the portfolio has done good, not great. Um, you know, good mostly because of Hero. A hero and Gen Pact have yeah. both done well. I think you so know. That, the 90 that prompts my second question. I mean, before you finish responding yes. to this, which is the three out of five investments are in listed companies. Yes. You know, one of them is the most evident investment. You know, that any investor in this country can make yes. in the country's top two-wheeler manufacturer. I'm just curious, what sets apart private equity from any other portfolio investor or a mutual fund? If at the end of the day you're also going to invest in, you know, amongst the top 100, 500 yes. listed companies. Yeah, I think it's a great question, Minka. And the problem really is that there is a structural issue in India hmm. which forces private equity to look more aggressively at listed companies than it does in other markets. Hmm. Uh, the barriers to listing in uh, uh, other markets, China is a great example, uh, is pretty high. Uh, as a consequence of which, uh, you know, there's a much larger pool of unlisted investments available for people to go out and make investments in, point number one. If you look at developed markets, uh, the thesis there is to actually do the reverse, which is take a company private and then work with it to improve its performance uh, and potential and then come back and relist it. Yeah. Which is pretty I'm much not even being, talking about buyouts yes, because they don't exist in India. Well, well they've started, uh, there's, you've started seeing a trend of more buyouts, but I think it's still nascent. But I think in India, both those opportunities unfortunately don't exist. Our regulations, in fact, in my view, uh, uh, unnecessarily so, push companies to go down the listing route very early on. Often these companies are not at all ready to perform as listed so companies. That reduces and then the pool of unlisted that companies. Reduces that reduces the amount, the pool for, of unlisted companies that private equity can invest in. But the, uh, the next thing that it lands up causing, Minka, is that there are, look, the market, uh, i.e. listed market, and, and a great example was the point we were talking about on IPOs. It opens and closes for sometimes long periods of time, right? And I think what private equity can do, as it did, uh, if you go back and look at what happened in the last five years, is be around as a stable source of capital when, when the capital market doesn't, is not willing to do deals. Also do deals which the capital market cannot do at points of time. So for example, I think it would have been very difficult for uh, the stock market to partner with the Munjal family to go and buy out Honda, right? It would have been very difficult for you know, General Atlantic and Oak Hill and a bunch of other investors to sell a large position they had in Genpact into the stock market. And if those options existed, obviously people would choose to those go one way. Goes over. Exactly. What do you make of Flipkart's $1 billion valuation? Uh, you know, have uh, they overcapitalized? You know, Minka, I think you'll get a better answer to that question from someone who has hair than someone no, come who on, doesn't come have on. hair. I have, mean, they, have they overcapitalized themselves? From no, a, you know, from, I, look, look at I, it from I, conventional I, private I, equity. I think, I think the problem and this is why lots of the conventional PE guys have not necessarily focused on these spaces and it's really been some of the newer funds or some of the you know e-commerce specific funds some of the hedge funds who actually gone into this space the traditional metrics that you use to value a company unfortunately don't work but we've been and there before we, you, we've been you've there, been there I, in the capital yes. market cycle in 1999 yes, I, absolutely uh, you know, in right India. and I could not so, understand it uh, but then. you sold many of those and, companies to uh, investors. Well, we sold one. <laughs> so, probably <laughs> okay. the best one to sell, but you know. But you know, I think, um, so my view, Minka, is that I have no doubt that e-commerce is going to be transformational in India. In fact, the case for e-commerce in India is even stronger than the case for e-commerce in the West. Yes. The reason being that we are a developing economy with real estate uh, costs of a developed economy, you know, because of terrible regulations in real estate. And real estate is a big, big part of uh, retail and, you know, completely distorts, therefore, the whole uh, return profile for retail. And therefore, I feel there's a strong case, especially as everyone 
is getting a cell phone and is beginning to get more and more you know uh, comfortable with it uh, my my view is that that theme will really play out but will it will it create value because of the valuation one, that these people are billion dollars would you have invested Amit? i would not have uh, now if i told you there were shares of flipkart available would I, I you would invest not, i would not i would also not have invested in uh, infosys uh, at the peak, uh, so you're telling me that I should and, and not. Took, and, I, I don't should, know how many years it took, and it's infosys. You're and, no judge of in, uh, so success. I'm, is what my point saying. is. Uh, my, my my point is that sometimes these these valuations, and we saw this. Uh, infosys is a great company which played out awesomely, but it took a long time for the shares to get back to a level that they had got to when things were really crazy. And my point is that it does seem like there's a little bit of a rising tide in that space at this point of time, and valuations seem to be getting heady and. Uh, in some cases, you can't understand those valuations based on any financial metric, and so uh, we, 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 and me personally struggle with that enormously. So, are you going to be an e-commerce investor in India? We are looking at e-commerce opportunities. Uh, again, for us, unfortunately, because we invest at, at a particular scale, uh, those tend to be larger, uh, larger plays, and so there are fewer opportunities available. But uh, we're trying to get educated. I, I have no degree of confidence in telling you we will definitely. When I we do our next interview three years from now, that <laughs> five years because that's in the <laughs> track record. Was, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so I have no degree of conviction in telling you that we would have invested in Made one. one. But, but I you're can looking tell you at that, the space with interest. Uh, yes, I, I think the space is very interesting. Okay. That, that's a, All right, Amit. Uh, to the next five years, I hope they're much better. Thank you very much Thank for your you. time. Thanks. Thanks.